everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today I have a very special guest, Rob Myers. I'm really happy to be able to do some pair programming on these videos for a change. Rob is an old friend of mine. I've known him for years. He is a principal consultant at Agile Institute, which is agileinstitute.com. Um, he also is on Twitter as Agile Coach. And he has been programming XP, uh, doing Agile, uh, training teams, consulting for about 12 years. About 12 years. A good long time. So say hi, Rob. Hello. All right. So we are going to pair program. So all that complaining I've been doing on the videos about not having a clue, Rob is here to tell us all about it. <laughs> and you know exactly how much of a clue I have, too. So let me show you what we're doing. All right. Um, well, as I mentioned before we started, I'm doing a an app to replace my retirement planning spreadsheet. And this is a really simplified version. And what we're working on right now is this stock market year class, which is sort of the fundamental domain object in the system. Um, we don't have a ton of classes yet uh, because I've only been working on this for, I don't know, okay. a few hours, um, maybe eight hours now with 35 videos. I'm not sure. 15 minutes of video. Anyway, we have dollars, uh, which is a value object, year, which is a value object, interest rate, which is a value object, tax rate, which is a value object. Stock market year is really where all the action is. Okay. Uh, this is one year in the stock market. Stock market accumulates these into multiple years. Uh, and in the spreadsheet, a stock market year corresponds to one of these rows. Okay. Um, now, the problem is, is that the work I had done in the program doesn't match the spreadsheet. I'm using the spreadsheet to check my work. Ooh. So I need it to match. Mm -hmm. So when we left off in the last video, um, I had was trying to get these tests to work. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Um, now I know with our physical setup here, you may not be able to do much driving. Um, but if you feel sure. like driving, just let me know and I'll we'll okay. pass the keyboard over. So um, I actually, you can, you can make fun of me for this, but I have been uh, just trying to solve the capital gains tax problem. That's what doesn't match. Okay. And the capital gains tax that there's an abstraction in the spreadsheet. I don't want to spend too much time on this, um, <laughs> any more time than you need, because I've been explaining it to the people <laughs> on the video to death. Right, we don't want to bore them. Right, well, uh, they're still watching, so obviously they have a high threshold. But um, Even though you have commented code in there? Hey, <laughs> I knew you were going to beg me about that. So the problem is is that there's an abstraction. You, I don't know how much you know about the way stock taxes work. Uh, it's such an exciting subject. You've probably studied it thoroughly, but... Well, I've, I've done some work with finances, but right. mm, so they're always a little way, different. The way it works is you buy some stock, you sell it later on, you pay debt tax on the difference. That's mm -hmm. capital gains tax. Well, for this, for this spreadsheet, um, we're just abstracting the years. Um, we're not modeling purchases or sales or anything like that. Okay. So the way the spreadsheet works is it just, just keeps track of how many tax, taxable gains you've had. And every sale is a sale of something that was taxable. So if I sell $900 worth of stock, it taxes $900. Okay. So it's a very pessimistic model. Okay. But we need to match it. So the problem is that the software was assuming that every sale was out of principle. So it was okay. doing zero taxes until we paid off all, until we sold all the purchases and then it was taxing all the gains. Okay. We need to tax the gains first and then uh, pay no tax on the purchases. Ah. Clear okay. as clear as mud, right? Clear as mud. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what can I say? But you're so, pretty sure that the spreadsheet is right. No, the spreadsheet's wrong too. They're both bad abstractions. The spreadsheet's more pessimistic, which means it's more less likely to put me in the poorhouse. Gotcha. Which is why I want to use the spreadsheet's abstraction. Plus, I you want to use it to test my work, and I'm not going to redo the spreadsheet. Right. Because the reason I'm writing the software is because I think the spreadsheet is too buggy and slow. It takes like five seconds just to change a value. Now I've put too much stuff in it. Okay. Anyway, um, capital gains withdrawn here in stock market year calculates the number of capital gains that's been withdrawn over the course uh, of the year. And we want it to be the minimum of two values. And I made a big mistake last time and I said maximum of two values. So so should we? Hmm. Let's, let's, let's fix that. Let's just get, let's put go on something. I'm going to get back to a green bar. Okay. Get rid of this test. Um, which means that I've got to get this code back to what's working. That's why all the comments are here. Because, oh, we, I, see. because I do 15 minute videos and um, things were all taken apart at the there end we go. of the last video. So okay. there we are. Back. 
And what I did was I wrote the wrong, I wrote max of two values instead of min of two values. So, oops. What did the test actually test for? Um, it, the test that I just commented out is the correct test. Um, but what I did is over in dollars, I wrote a little, this is my value object, I wrote a little method uh, called max of two values. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to write min of two values. So this should be a 20, that should be a 20. So with me, I know I'm sort of just dumping this on you. Sure. For, for all of you out there, I didn't really explain anything to Rob except that I was doing this and I said, hey, come record a video with me. And Rob said, sure. Yeah, so. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I'll pick it up as we go. Yeah, so um, there we go. So there it's failing. Okay. Um, do you want to try to make this pass? Uh, that way you can look foolish on camera too. Uh, no. Okay then. <laughs> well, I won't. Not yet. <laughs> I'm going to rename this to min of two values here. Um, and, uh, and then I've got to just change this to use math.min. There we go. Oh, I, hmm, okay. So there, I just wanted to, to there we go. min of two values. By the way, can you think of a better name than min of two values? I've got two dollar objects, and I want to return the lesser of the two. Oh, and you're comparing one dollar object to another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just minimum would be. Minimum? Okay with me. All right. Or minimum compared to? Well, see, that's not a whole lot better than min of two values. Right. Um, yeah, so that's my problem with this. Yeah, it's kind of a funny... It's a funny little concept. Um, I'm trying... I mean, dollars is, is a good concept. I like it as a value object. How about least of? Oh, least of. Okay, well, let's try that. Least of. So for all of you listening, um, one of the big advantages of working with a pairing partner is that you get a different perspective on your work, and you'll often come up with better names and, and just write code that's easier to understand because... You're not just all in your own head where you are always great, but other people look at you funny. Well, and I'm having a little bit of a trouble with this until I see the test because it's going to be a dollar value least of another dollar value. So it's still going to be a little bit weird. So value one, least of value two. Value two, least of value one. It sounds kind of Booleanish. Now I don't like it as much, but... Um, we could just do min. I don't know. I feel like we're starting to overthink this, honestly. Could be. I'm going to put it back to min of two values and... Uh, We'll leave it for now. Yeah, a minute two times. All right. Um, so anyway, the reason I commented out this test is because changing the way the stock market... So we're done with that now. Okay. The um, reason I commented out this test earlier is because changing the calculation here for capital gains withdrawn, of course, breaks everything because mm -hmm. all the assumptions are that this code works in a certain way. And I'm okay with that. Once we get this working, I figure we can sort of work our way out, uh, unless you have another idea about how to do it. And also, I think we're just about done. Like, I think this code's pretty much done. Okay. <laughs> I'm still... You're still lost. Not quite caught up. Yeah. Well, and this, this capital gains tax thing is funny. Um, it's definitely not... I mean, it, it never seems like it ought to be hard to code, but I always struggle with it um, for whatever reason. Go ahead and put this test back. And fingers crossed, I'm hoping this will work. No, no, my life. Oh, no, of course, I have to write just this one test. Um, and that one's, that one's passing. Do you want to, so what, Okay. does this test speak clearly to you? Cattle gains tax is paid first. Mm-hmm. Starting balance minus starting principal. Okay. Year withdraw new dollar five hundred. To some degree, yeah. So what I'm trying to say, and I actually haven't updated the this here. I'm trying to say we're withdrawing five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to pay tax on entire withdrawal uh, 
and there's our 167. And then once we withdraw all the tax, um, that's where we're paying tax on all withdrawals until the capital gains tax is withdrawn. So basically what we're trying to do is treat all withdrawals as capital gains tax, as subject to capital gains tax. Okay. Uh, sure. That I'm following. Uh, until uh, all capital gains have been sold. Ah, uh, okay. That's what's going on here. We're selling uh, off the capital gains. You are. Yeah, okay. we're selling off all the capital gains first. Gotcha. That's not really possible, which is why it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around. But it's easier to calculate. It's easier to calculate, and it matches the spreadsheet. Oh, epiphany. Okay, good. All I'm, right. I'm better to be a piffed on than a piffed off. That's what I say. Got it. Or no. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, audience. Uh, I Rob brings out the worst of me, particularly my puns. So just just so you know, um, <laughs> blame it on me. Yeah, I've, ne I've never made a pun like that on this video before, so it is all your fault. Naughty pun. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe we're gonna upload this. So um, now we've got. If we're happy with the fact the way that works, um, okay. now we've just changed everything else. What what we basically need to do is change our expectations in the test. Mm -hmm. um, probably should double check them as well. Uh, as I'm looking at this, though, I see that our tests are nicely encapsulated in that only um, only the stock market year is failing. So that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at capital gains tax. Um, this is withdrawing 4000 um, Capital gains. Yeah, so capital gains tax includes tax on withdrawals to couple of So this is the interesting thing. If our capital gains tax, oh, reboot the computer, we have to wait for it. Um, if our capital gains tax is 25% and we pay $250 on a $1,000 withdrawal, mm -hmm. that $250 comes from somewhere. Right. And I'm assuming we sell more stock in order to get that $250, which means they pay capital gains tax on that too. Sell to cover. Yeah. Cover. Oh, you know more about this than I do. That, well, that's an interesting, that's a domain <laughs> term I've never heard before. So you obviously know more about this than I do. That's great. Thanks for being dredged up from my yeah. distant past. So, so so the formula is 40,000 divided by 0.75 hmm. minus 4,000, which means we should be paying 1,333, not 13033. And then the total withdrawn is going to include that. Yep. So, um, so that should work. Uh, but, but, and it did actually, remember yep. we had multiple tests failing. Okay. Interest well, earn has got the same issue. How did you get yourself in this mess? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Do you not like the tests? Maybe we should go through no, and I fix like them. No, the test. It's okay. just that we have multiple tests breaking, which is always creepy. It is creepy, but they're all in the same class. Um, okay. and we did change something pretty fundamental. Okay. I don't have the test testing just one method because I found them really hard to read. So I reworked them fairly early on to try to tell a better story. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah, I, that's fine. Yeah, so withdrawals... I like test the test behavior, not methods. Yeah, and that's what we're, we've got right. here. I'm sort of... I, I get, I'm actually kind of torn on that. The nice thing about tests that just test methods is that they only break if you change the method they're testing. They don't break for other reasons. So mm -hmm. I'll go back and forth. In this case, I wanted to test the behavior just because it was so hard to communicate otherwise. Mm -hmm. So here, interest earned... Um, withdrawals don't earn interest. Well, the problem was that we withdrew and we paid capital gains on this. So um, I think we might want to make a new stock market year that doesn't have any capital gains on it. So the new year will be like 2010. Um, starting balance will be 10,000. Capital uh, oops. starting principal can be ten thousand. And what else do we have? Interest rate and tax rate. We're almost out of time here. The clock is ticking. Yeah, let's see if I can get this one in. The last second. Thank you very much to Rob for being my pair partner on this. Rob Myers of the Agile Institute. Um, I wish I could have performed I, I, miracles. Yeah, I wish you could have performed miracles too. I don't know what's wrong here. We'll have to fix it next, next time. time. Yeah. Thanks everybody for watching. We will see you next time. Bye all.